Epic Moose Home is brought to you by Cryptic, Battlefield to Backcountry. And by the Wildlife Gallery. Experience the difference. Hornaday. Accurate, deadly, dependable. So when was the last time you heard of anybody taking two 70-inch bull moose in one camp, let alone in one year? I've never even heard of a guide or guiding service that has ever done that in a season. Well, in this next episode, that's just what happened. Me, Butch Whiting, and Jeff Wall went out on an epic moose hunting adventure, and we took two 70-inch bulls in one week. And Butch Whiting took a 63-inch bull in that same hunt. So three bulls in one week. We all took the biggest bulls of our career in one hunting season. By the way, this guy here is 67 inches wide. So these two bulls are bigger than this big guy. Well, good morning, everybody. It's Troy Sessions here with uh, Duck Shack Productions. And it's another great morning and uh, time to go moose hunting. Uh, Jeff and Butcher, Miami, probably about uh, 40 miles. Uh, 30 minutes DTA for uh, moose camp. Here we go. Skills like that that allows you to hunt places like this. For the first time ever, Butch Whiting and Crip Tech is teaming up with Jeff Wall and Whisper Tech. They're joining forces with Troy Sessions and Duck Shack Productions for this once in a lifetime epic adventure. These guys venture out with two airplanes, all their gear, and challenge Alaska's Arctic in their quest for the Alaska Yukon Moose. So strap on your seatbelts as they head out over 200 miles in the wilds of Alaska. Area is known for for uh, Troy in particular taking some epic moose out of here. And it's just a you couldn't ask for anything better. I'm I'm so stoked. Uh, we're having to just get out and do a little scouting and I same day fly in. We uh, came in today and Troy's been in and out of this quote unquote strip, which it's not even anything close to a strip. It's called off road. You need to put it, lock in the hubs if you're gonna land in this spot. Huh? You're gonna you for sure. Well, you'll see here is the. Uh, the hunt goes on as we go in and out of here. Uh, you spend as much time skipping across the water on your wheels, maybe more than you do actually on terra firma. So it's it's quite exciting. Yeah, ready for bed? So. Got the stove all stoked up, ready for fire in the morning. Coffee ready. Uh, day two, about 6.30. And uh, been doing some light cow calling. And we're gonna go head out back here into kind of a meadow. See if what we'll, see if anything showed up last night. And if they're there, we're gonna entice them to come closer.
on the hill where I usually see bulls. Pretty good indication was my bull laying down up there, but I made a couple cow calls and uh, the cow looked at me and then immediately, immediately looked down the hill where we couldn't see. And then we started, me and Jeff started hearing bull grunts, didn't we, Jeff? Why? So three days later, we hunted that morning. We were up on the bluff. We crossed the, we, we waded across the river there, and we were up on that bluff and finished the morning hunt with nothing. We didn't see anything in the valley. And I told Jeff, I said, let's let's uh, let's go. You know, I'll tell you what. You want to start breaking down camp? I'm going to take off and go over here and check out this, that that other area we couldn't land at a few days ago and see if I can go in there light. My plane's light now, all the gear's out of it. Maybe I can go in there and land on one of those gravel bars, clear it out, move some logs, break off some branches, and just kind of move some debris out of the way so we can come in nice and safe with a load. Well, uh, I'm on the other, getting close to the other side of this fog bank that we got going here. And it looks like uh, the area I'm going to be going is, uh, we're, this is perfect. It's, it's, it's just breaking up just on, just short of where we're going to be landing in our moose camp. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, I committed. You gave me that. You committed. You did it. <laughs> did you get that on? F F yeah, the first one was a non-committal. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, we moved camp. We are not settling for 50-inch bulls. I mean, that's not why we came out here. So, uh, Troy did a little more scouting this morning and discovered a spot over here. We got one that's somewhere between probably mid 60s and 70 uh, could be bigger there's two other big bulls that are together that we know of in lots of great moose habitat on the way over we popped up over a saddle saw a monster troy thinks just every bit as big as the big one that's here and we're really torn as to whether to go land up high on a on a uh, ridge top or not but we can always go back for him we're gonna hunt this in the morning and uh you'll see how it turns out yeah, good morning. It's uh, first morning in moose camp, and me and Jeff are <clears throat> boiling up coffee and got the stove going right here. How cool is that, huh? Got a fire going in there. Jeff's got the jet boil going. Well, first thing in the morning, I don't like to get in a boat or an ATV and take off up into a mountainside when you got that crisp, clean, still air. It's been calm all night long. I'm more out to stay in camp and call from camp that, that, that in the morning time. In the evening, I'll travel to that bluff or I'll hike up to an area, I'll get on an ATV or whatever I, um, <clears throat> I need to do uh, in, to get into an area, and then I'll hunt that area without moving. So uh, after calling in camp all morning, uh, we decided we were going to hike up the bluff there and kind of look, a, get a, an overall view of everything. And, as the rain stopped and we were just going to make it a camping day, but I uh, decided, hey, you know, it's 8 o'clock, it's an hour and ever, let's, uh, let's get up on that bluff and look around and see what, what could be out there. So we're new to, to this whole region anyway, so it's kind of a big discovery every step we take. I just made one long cow call and the antlers just stood up.
we were coming up on the noon hour and as I've seen happen many times over the years, that's a time when you can see these big bulls stretch up and stretch out in the middle of the day and kind of look around. And so Troy uh, commenced to do some calling and out in the distance, probably oh, at least a half mile away, maybe further, all of a sudden this monster bull stands up. Here he comes, right to us. He's coming right to us. <laughs> I think you got him, buddy. All right, let's just hold on. I think you cut yourself a moose. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up. Right on, man. <laughs> Whisper Tech, True Free Search. Cryptic all came together in one spot. Cool enough to kiss. Yeah. You see that? <laughs> Come on. He tipped him over. 150 yards. Was it? it was 150. <laughs> it pleased with this rifle, man. It just. I couldn't. I could. It didn't hurt my ears. What? Yeah. Either. No, no hearing protection. Three shots. Yeah. It didn't hurt my ears yeah. either. I'm like, usually you're plugging your ears. Oh, yeah. Didn't even... 22 rifles louder than that. Yeah. And it knocked down Mr. Big over here. You can't even see him now. You know, can't even see him. Those guys lay down and just go. Man. Proof research, whisper tech, a crypt tech all came together. Duck Shack Productions with Troy Sessions. That's right. Here we are. I love a buddy Troy. <laughs> Sweet. Hang on right there. Let's go check out the big boy. Big thanks to Butch Whiting, Cryptek, Jeff Wall, Whisper Tech, the silencers, the cans, and Proof Research. Thanks for letting me use the gun, guys. Yeah. Had a great demo with the Alaska State Troopers. Followed it up with some sheep hunting and just put this big boy down in September 9. It's right at noon. It's uh, 71, and, 71 and a half inches. <laughs> Cow, dude. Seventy-one and a half. Hiked up, found this perfect little setup of a hill. Set up on the hill, started calling, and this guy just stood up. It was amazing. Just had done several, probably done several call cow, cow calls, and uh, we waited, you know, probably I don't know an hour and a half. Thought we'll just kind of wait till noon, which is one of the traits of these big boys. So. A lot of times stand up around noon and take a look around and sure enough about 11 30 or so Troy let out a bellow and this guy just and it was just like he just stood up yeah was he a half mile away you think yeah 
easy. So big that we seen them right away. Big pans got them on, on footage. Yeah. Just like on a tether cord, just right to us. It's so fun to watch. You'll see it in the video. Yeah. It's just, he was thra you know, thrashing the brush, and letting the, the, the cow he thought was a cow know where he was at and showing off a bit for the, for yeah. the cow and came right in. I want to tell you, Troy Sessions is one of my best friends on the planet. And uh, his stock just went way up. <laughs> and really, hunt, hunting with this guy is some of the most fun I have in life. And to be able to fly two high performance super cubs out here, just get the lay of the land and be able to hunt with somebody that's a world class hunter has been just a lot of a lot of fun for me. We've both been hunting moose for years, but always learning. And I know I've come with some great takeaways on this as far as judging a big bull. Uh, areas I normally hunt would be rare and probably would never get a moose this size. So this spot's top, top secret. It's a, it's a no-name spot. Yeah. Officially. Yeah. Appreciate you, man. We're gonna call it Mr. Big Spot. Yeah, here we go. It's all set. Do it yourself hunting. The Troy Sessions. Look what we did! Yep. We decided let's head back to camp and because uh, we're kind of tired and tomorrow let's go after uh, let's go into this village that we know about and see if we can get some gasoline uh, because for our return flight we were kind of concerned that we didn't have enough gasoline. So we did. We went to, the, to this village and got some gas, uh, filled up the planes, came back, and we were going to land, but the wind had picked up to 20 mile an hour. And it was just kind of like a cauldron in that one particular area. And I was coming in to make my approach, and you got to go down beneath the trees and fly the river and tickle your tires. Well, it was the mechanical turbulence was just too much, and it was, it was not a safe. Uh, approach at that point in time. So we aborted landing and had to fly home. Of course. And uh, what we got going on here is we got a mountain range in front of us that we got to climb over. Or presently, it's like. Uh, yeah, we probably want to see just to the right of East Road. That kind of tailwind is going to be pretty violent up draft. Right. Yeah, that's, that's probably when I'm, that's probably a good idea. So we'll hang up to the north side of that mountain range so we don't get any in any updraft or trouble with that wind. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Sessions. Not the same angle. It's skills like that that allows you to hunt places like this. Hey Butch, how you doing? Good. How you doing? Good to see you. He's a fellow adrenaline junkie, so I'm sure he's yeah. he felt a little better if he was flying. Right? Yeah. That's, that was, uh, <laughs> that's one way to do it. That's one way to do it. <laughs> I love that water stuff, man. That is so much fun. Well, we made it back in today, and now we're going to go retrieve moose meat. Jeff's moose. Well, Butch Whiting came in, he's helping out. We're going to miss our spot. Uh oh. Heading into Jeff's got a pile on that big moose. Around for bear just in case there's no one on it. It appears to me that some large carnivore has taken its back straps. Yeah. Oh, that's right, that, that was us. That was us. <laughs> now that's a moose rack, buddy. Hold on, let me see this. <laughs> Looks like the, a sign of success there, boys. Yeah. Got them not only down but in pieces and half of them's on the other side of the river. This is the rest of the world. Pretty nice. It's a good thing it wasn't much bigger. It's about as long as this Pro Pioneer as it is. Yeah, I know. The Pro Pioneers turned out to be a really useful raft for this moose hunting, isn't it? And we all do it that one. No kidding. It'd, take a lot longer, you know? It'd be a heck of a lot more work without it. Oh. 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 
This place is different than the last place. It's uh, it's not in the mountains, so you don't hear the river. It's a lot quieter, isn't it? It really is. It's so peaceful. I mean, there ain't a, a breath of wind or a ripple in the water. So we're pretty sure that we're hearing a bull. We're actually loading up our gear right here. We're gonna float around. Get up on this ridge. We've been calling this morning, Troy been calling. We actually got a fellow man caller because he's got this sexy, sexy cow call. And I'm pretty sure that we're here in a bull. Coming in. Let's walk down. Let's, let's walk around over here. Just go check. Yeah, yeah. And see what's over there. I think it's gonna come out on that point. He's a, he's a nice one. Look at that. Team Thrash. Yeah, he's getting geared up. Let's, uh, let's get a better look at him. Yeah, let's get around this point here a little bit. He's got a good growls. He's a Let's get him across here. Well, he might be better than thinking. He's a three by four bro. He's it is so cool. Jeff's not even here. He's gonna come across. Might as well make him come across. He's definitely in the fifties, man. He's definitely. It's hard. It's hard when you've got a 70 inch pull down. That's amazing. Nobody else would probably even think about passing. And I hear this bull grunt going on and on and on. And it finally dawned on me, there's no way Troy is bull grunting that long. And I clean things up, come over here and I'm like, my God, he's coming right into camp. <laughs> Let's go check him out, huh? <clears throat> Can you believe that?
Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think he's better than I thought he was. He's better yeah. than I thought he was. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a beautiful bull. Looking through the camera sometimes, you're like, yeah. he's a beautiful bull. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's, that's a monster, dude. He's way better than I thought. Yeah. I got him. I got him. You can hand out some. You know his look? <laughs> Troy Sessions looks like good. <laughs> what? I think what did he just like this? He goes. What's <laughs> 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 your lips call? This guy's a Did you hear? I said, I hear him. I said, Are you sure? I said, Yeah, I'm positive. Did you hear him? Mm. Then I go, There was a game. He goes and grabs the camera. Let's go. We walk 30 yards and go, there he is, there he is. Are you serious? 62 and a half inches? <laughs> Man. 62 and a half inch. <laughs> that, was the magic mark, boys and that was a magic mark. That's incredible. 62 and a half inches. Wow. What's, he had me. He had me fooled. He had me fooled too because of this right here. It's because of how wide that is. Have Usually, you ever seen a 62 and a half inch bowl with an eight inch pan? Never. <laughs> I have never. And, I, and I have gauged 15 different big bowls probably that we that I've taken. I mean, he's not even 12 at the top. Yeah, and this is the kind that deceives you. Pretty with these long, long bowl. He's 30, he's 32. Well, that's what gets you, because the norm is like 27. Yeah. Okay. And he's 32, that's what did it. You know what, he's probably an older bull. Yeah. Bigger older bull. Yeah. yeah. Well, just shot a giant, big, Huge, beautiful, 62 and a half inch bull. We got amazing, amazing video on it. Troy Sessions, Jeffrey Wall, and uh, myself just had an experience this morning, I think, that we'll probably remember for a long time. And um, of a, a really super unique bull. We kind of spent some more time, you know, looking it over. And it's a solid 63 inch bull. We thought it was about a 62 and a half, but it's solid 63. And uh, some of the most, I think, epic footage I've seen. Yeah, it's not on the big screen, but I mean, you've been doing this for a long time. The super neat part about this deal is just being able to watch him for the better part of probably five minutes or so. Crossing the river. Coming across the river. And when he came in the river, you know, he kind of stood out in the middle and just kind of waved his horns back and forth like this. You know, kind of tried to figure out where we were and what we were and what was going on and kind of analyze the situation. But... Uh, you know, you and I sat there and spent a lot of time you know, trying to judge him. And now that we've got, you know, like, we're hands-on, it's just, you can just see the grain in this bull. And honestly, I'm interested to pull the teeth and look at it. just think it's real bull. I've never seen a vapor trail leave the silencer of a gun and, and directly go right into an animal like that at 30 yards. Usually that's a long-distance shot. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we did it! Look what we did! Man! <laughs> what a beaut! Well, we've got the uh, first moose about ready to be flown out. And so, a lot of weight on these planes. Short takeoff. So let's see how it goes, and uh, we'll be all right. Find out here soon, huh? There we go. One moose out of camp on its way back to uh, Fairbanks left me here along with the uh, 
other moose and the bears. So we'll see what happens. So now we are dealing with what we potentially think are bears, and there's, well, it's obvious that why. And uh, that's part of hunting in Alaska, but these are grizzly bears, and they're not something to be messed with, and it's dark, and so we're all geared up. We've all got, you know, the proper protection. We're also in, a, in an area, Troy, that a, a friend of mine has been a game biologist for almost 30 years, and uh, according to him, one of the biggest, nastiest grizzly bears in the entire state of Alaska are we're in their backyard right now, so we do need to be situationally aware and uh, ready to respond in case they're hungry. Okay, so what's going on here? It's the next day now. After Butch got his big bull, uh, coming across the, the river, and we got that thing all quartered up. <clears throat> kind of a sign of, of success is the person getting the bulls still in the sleeping bag asleep right now. Well, Jeff and Butch are both snoozing right now. Can't even get them up. They just won't get up at all. They're just like cooked. <clears throat> so I'm the only one left with the tag. So obviously I'm up and excited and trying to call in a big bull. I'm pretty hopeful it's going to be bigger than both of theirs. Had to get the small ones out of the way before I can get you know, the big ones to come in. So I got coffee brewing and it's kind of raining outside. And uh, these guys are in here just, you know, you can't get them out there. Used. That's proof, buddy, right there. Whispered in his ear. Did you whisper in his ear? Whispered in his ear. <laughs> proof, baby. He is a pig, Troy. He is. One took him down. Second one just bleed him out in ethical. Proof put him down. And whispered in his ear. <laughs> Look at that. Proof Jack, he didn't even see us. He was kind of like outskirting us. All I could hear was a grunt and he kept looking up in there and it's gonna round and about. Couldn't see us at all. Put him on a, on a tether. Who's our cameraman? Which whiting's the cameraman this time? <laughs> was tagged out yesterday. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. That is cool stuff, huh? He didn't want to let him uh, get up on the, a uh, little closer to the edge there. Well, I did, but. I was thinking about camera. Well, he was getting ready to come through that brush right there. And I got to thinking about the camera working on it. We had a clear shot with the camera. It was great. He's down. Look at the fronts on that bull. Okay, 
put it where it needs to go there, Butch. <laughs> Give me some love, guys. What is it? 70-inch bull. <laughs> Shut up. Um, you won't believe it, Dad. You won't believe it, but I'm sitting in the side of a river with the biggest moose I've ever taken in my life, right at this moment. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Epic. Epic. Look at this guy. Man, he is huge. <laughs> Look at that. The biggest bull ever taken. And I've taken some doozies. This is the biggest one. I finally, after 13 years, I have finally broken into the 70 inch club with you guys. How, how cool is that? How cool is that? I've been trying for 13 years. I've got taken 67 inch, six, several 65s, uh, numerous, well, 13 in the 60s, and a handful in the 50s. And I finally did it. <laughs> Again, um, what an epic adventure me, Butch, and, and uh, Jeff all just discovered this past week. One of the most successful moose hunts I've ever been a part of. And I took my biggest bull today, the 70 incher. Jeff took a 71 and a half, and Butch Whitey took a 63 inch. And I got mine on the wing strut right now. The only way to get him out of the bush is playing. But uh, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why did he just like this? He goes. <laughs> 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 your lips call this one. Did you hear? I said, I hear. Are you sure? I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 Huge, beautiful 62 and a half inch bull. We got amazing, amazing video on it. Yeah, reflecting back a little bit on this hunt and going back over the footage, it's just, uh, it's hands down the most epic adventure I've had to date. And, you know, being able to do this with Troy Sessions and the depth of knowledge and experience he has when it comes to hunting everything big game in Alaska, uh, it's just made it all the more uh, just a memorable experience. You know, we, we knew there were other moose in the area, but quite frankly, to, to get a third bull, I mean, Who'd have thought that was possible? And so as, as Troy was out there calling, Butch goes along and becomes the cameraman at that point, I'm back in camp and listening to some of this go on. And quite frankly, I'm like, hey, where's my camera? You know, where's my, uh, I, I gotta grab something to record this. So I was coming in from behind them and you know, watching this go on and trying to get my camera you know, up here high enough over the, over the bushes and the willows to try to get a little bit of it on film for myself. Yeah, and I'd say, you know, before you, you head out into the field, you got to do that homework and uh, get, getting input from videos like Troy's, no matter what type of hunting you're doing. It's, you know, I've been hunting here in Alaska since the, uh, the early 80s. Uh, had the pleasure to, to uh, do a lot of big game hunting over the years. And over the years, you know, for, for a lot of years, quite frankly, calling moose was somewhat of a mystery to me. And so I've had many years in the field learning by trial and error, which I'd suggest to skip that. And uh, just, just 
go right to the menu and, <laughs> and let Troy show you how to do these things. And I've learned a lot from this guy. And it's just augmented what I already knew. But you know, you look at it and think, wow, these guys are just getting these monster moves because they're pilots. Not so. I've hunted for years just uh, on foot uh, with boats. And I've, and I've learned the value of calling. And quite frankly, you know, as a, as a 50 year old guy, I do not want to carry a 1500 pound animal four or five miles like I used to when I was 25. So calling it makes all the difference in the world. The combination of cow calls, thrashing, bull grunts, and knowing how to do those is the difference between uh, camping and a successful hunt. And, and that's what a guy's got to learn how to, or a person's got to learn how to do is get those animals to come to you. The reality is that the, the moose that you've seen taken in this video were all taken within about a thousand yard triangle. And that was because we called them to where we were at. And I'd like to share another hunt, moose hunt that I went on a year prior to this epic adventure you just now seen um, in an area that uh, I kind of call the honey hole. It's on a lake and in order to hunt this, um, I had to take the wheels off and put my plane on floats and get them into that so I can get into that area. Uh, I'd seen moose in this valley uh, numerous times and particularly close to this one lake, um, which I knew there was gonna be some packing involved. So I brought in a fold of boat so I could you know, put it together and go across the lake and drag it overland into the nearby stream that I could get to. A little bit closer to it now. I'm gonna go over this one little ridge and over that cloud layer and I'll squeeze up over the top of that and underneath that big one. Look at this, all the snow we got here recently. I could, I'm a week late getting in here because the weather was so bad and raining and this is what I left behind. It's early in the season. It's, uh, I think it's uh, September 7th right now or 8th and we're and uh, we're just now getting in. I should have been in boot camp a, a week ago, but all is well. We got two more weeks ahead of us. Fair chase is where it's at, and conservation of all animals on anywhere on this uh, God-given earth of ours is the way to hunt animals. Honestly, if I was driving down the road and seen a world record buck or moose or doll sheep or anything, I wouldn't shoot it. Uh, for one, it's illegal in most cases, and for and first and foremost, I didn't get the chance to, to go camping. I didn't get the chance to get out there and pursue that animal fair chase. The lake that we landed on was so short that it required a specialized airplane, which I happen to have, to, to be able to land and take off in those short areas. That lake is just a puddle of a, of a lake. Um, and that's probably why no one had been in there. Anyhow, for now I'm here at No Name Lake and I've offloaded the plane and I got everything over here on the bank. And uh, I'm getting ready to put camp up and a big old squall storm moved in and I'll show you right here. It's uh, looking pretty bad. I had to tie the plane down to the tree over here on both sides and anchor the plane down so it wouldn't lift off or anything, but you can see it's blowing pretty hard. Finally made it into moose camp. Winds calmed down, camp is up. Wind's laid down and it is beautiful out here. So there's the park to plane. Can't hunt today. That's all right. Right behind our camp. There's camp. Beautiful back here. Get ready to cook some, some ribs. We are enjoying life as calm as can be. Look at this. This is moose camp. On this particular hunt, we're on a hillside. Uh, got a beautiful camp set up. Uh, we're about 50 feet above the lake so we can see the whole valley. It's really just a neat place, not to mention beautiful, picturesque view it's right from camp. When 
went up on top of this hill and we were able to see a bull moose down in the valley and we were really happy that we had that fold boat because we had to use that fold boat to get downriver to hunt that moose. He was so far downriver that packing him back was going to be just too much and he was on the other side of the creek from where camp was at. Look what we found. Big old moose shed. That's a nice bull. I wonder if that's what we got sitting over there now. This is two years old. I found it two years ago. And the other half of it's right over there in the slough, probably rotten, but we're gonna look at it next. But, uh, that's 15, 12 to 15 inch pans. 12 puts, makes out a 60 inch bull for sure. That's probably a 65 inch bull. Not real good on the brows, right here, but it's full right across here. That's what you want for a trophy bull. Scores good. Woohoo, let's go get the other one. All right. I think this is the other half, don't you? Twelve and a half, fifteen. That's a 65 inch bull, buddy. That's what he looks like. Probably that far apart from the skull. Probably more like this right here, wide. That's a big bull. I'd have taken that bull, wouldn't you? Uh, we only take one moose in this uh, trip because I'm the only hunter. I just brought a camera guy with me uh, to film and to help out along the way with pulling the boat across and uh, packing gear and what all. All right, we're on the drift now. And we've only got about 500 yards to float here and we're on them just like that. So we, we, haven't, been, we haven't been on this river ever and just kind of seen it from up on the hill. We got to time. The timing's got to be crucial. We can't get out too late because we'll be upwind. Right now we're upwind, or we're downwind. And so it's uh, we're set up pretty nice if we do this. We get out early enough. Had we'd never been in the area before, we and we've never been on that river. I bet you no one has ever been on that river. There's no way to put in any higher up, and there's no way to get to it from below. Where we are in deep in this particular hunting spot, which is why. The big bulls are there. Don't be quiet when you're hunting moose. I mean, don't talk, but, uh, and if you do, whisper, but thrash the brush a little bit, um, cow call light and, and uh, nice light bull grunts and don't have to direct it towards where you think the moose is at. You can kind of project it away or even behind you. You'll see me cow calling from behind when I know the bull's here because I don't want him to pinpoint exactly my, my spot. I want, I want him to think that moose is even further back in the wheat, in the trees and what all.
you see that? Did you see that? Come on out there. <laughs> he able to smack that one. That was about 150 yards. He closed the distance. <laughs> Shack rack works. <laughs> Wasn't that cool? It's like 4.30. 5 o'clock. It's 5 o'clock. And we got a big bull down. A big old smack daddy. Looks good, buddy. Wider, wider than I thought. Look at that. Three, four, five on that side. And he has, has four and had three break off. Well, you saw how we put the smack down on this big boy. You know, we just did a little bit of light thrashing and real light bull grunts. Like we were interested in the cow that we had seen him with up from up on the hill. And uh, that was it. He just, just a little bit of thrash, enough to give him a little bit curious about what was coming in. And he came out just enough that to show himself and to realize that we were small. I had that little shack rack. I had my little shack rack thing, imitating them and everything. And he was buying into it, you know. I think he's seen what he wanted to see and that I wasn't a threat and he was just turning the head back in and we, well, it was now or never and we popped him good. He had to grab the boat and drag it from the lake over into the river because he's down river. And if we weren't able to pack him out with the boat, we weren't going to do it. Just, he could see there's big as a horse. So with that little dinghy, we'll, we'll get him back to the lake half mile over here and, and uh, chillax. Look at that. Look at that. Big long tines. <laughs>